So I don't know if you all have noticed this about my videos yet, but I always try to explain the lore of Elden Ring in the most simplistic way I possibly can. I do this because Elden Ring's lore is already the most confusing storyline of any medium I've ever tried to consume. I think of myself as an outlier in that regard because you as a viewer definitely don't need to click on a video about a topic you're trying to understand better but end up more confused than you were before when you finish it. Trying to put Elden Ring's story in a concise, understandable way for all of you to watch and at the same time be entertaining can only be put in one way. It's really hard. But nothing in life is worth doing unless it was hard to begin with, right? So today, I'm going to try and explain a confusing area in the world of Elden Ring known as Crumbling Baramazula. There's a lot to digest in this area. There's many theories as to what everything means and why we end up in this area in the first place. It gets confusing, so I will do my very best to explain it in the most simple way I can. Before we get into the rest of the video, this video is sponsored by you guys and your support here on YouTube and on Patreon. The growth on the channel has been incredible lately, so I'll keep making videos if you guys keep enjoying them. Our percentage of subscriber to viewer ratio has been growing like crazy lately, so make sure to subscribe if you like the video all the way through. Also, a special thank you to the patrons you can see on screen for the extra support. If you want early access to videos and discussions, go check out the Patreon for yourself. That's where you can get access. With all of that said, let's get into the video. The one who walks alongside flame shall one day meet the road of destined death. So what does Melina mean by this? Throughout our journey up to Melina's sacrifice at the Forge of the Giants, we've heard a lot about destined death. It's mentioned to us in many different ways and can be confusing to understand at times. To make it less confusing, destined death seems to be a synonym for the Rune of Death. They go hand in hand. The Rune of Death was once protected by the Glomide Queen and her followers, and they were responsible for dispersing death to those destined to die. Hence the phrase regarding the Rune of Death as also being destined death. In our final moments with Melina, she tells us that she has long observed the lands between, that the world is in dire need of repair and death indiscriminate. What she means by this is that the dispersal of death throughout the lands between, since Malekith sealed the Rune of Death away, has been random, without order, or just not happening at all. That's why some of the enemies we fight are seemingly undead, because they can't actually die. Melina's task is to release the Rune of Death, or Destined Death, back into the world so that a new era may begin, hopefully, as we become the new Elden Lord. So when she tells us that the one who walks alongside flame shall one day meet the road of destined death, she's referring to us walking alongside the forge of the giants, lighting the flame, and removing the impenetrable thorns which stop us from our destined fate, which is to become the new Elden Lord. If you haven't found it yet, there's a secret room when you take the lift down to the Forbidden Lands that holds the Blade of Calling which reads, Dagger to the one who set out on a journey to fulfill her duty long ago. The power of its former owner, the Kindling Maiden, is still apparent. The one who walks alongside Flame shall one day meet the road of destined death. It's possible that this small room was designed for Melina in order to fulfill what she is meant to do, which is to fix the lands between and help us, the Tarnished, become the Elden Lord. There isn't a ton to go off of here, but this might have to do with Queen Merica's plan to defy or test the greater will. And if you want more information on that, go watch my video on Queen Merica's perfect plan. Now, it may seem random that we wake up in Faramazula after Melina sacrifices herself, but this is what we were fated to do. Walk alongside Flame so that one day we will meet the road of destined death. The road is obviously referring to Ferrum Azula. Now, this is a From Software game, so it isn't really necessary to dive into the logic of how we just randomly wake up in Ferrum Azula. We are meant to speculate on how and why we are here. Maybe Melina just teleported us here after her sacrifice because that was our next step towards our destiny. She teleported us to the Round Table Hold, so it isn't too far of a stretch, or 
Faramazula could just be a dream or mental state. I have this long shot theory that Faramazula isn't actually real, but is inside of ourselves as a tarnished, a world developed by our guidance of grace, manifested within us, but is in a shattered state. We are meant to mend this shattering within ourselves and the world as a whole with the Elden Ring. I also believe that the Round Table is one of these dream states as well. We can find a different version of the Round Table in the capital city. It could be, along with Faramazula, a manifestation of what once was in order to continue down our path toward our destiny. But just like with the Round Table in the capital city, we can see these ruins throughout the lands between that are oddly similar to the floating, crumbling ruins of Faramazula itself. I'm sure you've all found many of these ruin fragments spread around the world, but when we read the item description, it states that these small stone fragments are found near places where ruins have fallen from the sky. These shards of stone are believed to have once been a part of a temple in the sky. Now we don't know for sure, but it could be that the Ferrum Azula Temple was once above everything in the lands between, potentially located right above Limgrave. Ruins like the one we see Kenneth Height standing on could have fallen from Ferrum Azula itself when it was once above Stormvale Castle or Limgrave. It's also been stated that Stormvale once had much stronger winds and storms surrounding it. Maybe this could have been the location of Ferrum Azula and the tornado or storm that we can find there. But why did Faramazula move? Why is it now located so far out to the east? Well, like I said before, it could be just like the round table. It isn't actually in any type of location. It's on our map for us to travel there, of course, but it isn't truly there, at least in the form that we can find it in. Now, I do think that Faramazula is physically out to the far east beyond Kaled because we can at certain points find Garank outside of his temple howling in the direction of Faramazula, indicating that some version of Faramazula is out there to the east somewhere. In regards to the Faram Beastmen, we can learn from their ashes that the spirits of beastmen from doomed Faramazula, the slowly crumbling ruins in the skies. These ruins are said to be the remains of a giant mausoleum enshrining an ancient dragon, guarded by chosen beastmen who wielded weapons clad in lightning. We can see tons of grave sites holding the bones of fallen Ferrum beastmen who it looks like have been chosen to protect their dragon lord, likely waiting alongside their lord until their outer god returns to them. When we enter the dragon lord fight, we start to understand that time can be altered in some way. How is this possible? I have no idea. Why our character knows to just lay down next to a tornado, I have no idea on that either. Or just like our character knows to just jump into a coffin, I'll never understand that part either. It's a From Software game and trying to come up with logistical answers to questions we may have will just lead to more unnecessary confusion. When we earn the Dragon Lord's remembrance, it reads that the Dragon Lord whose seat lies at the heart of the storm beyond time is said to have been Elden Lord in the age before the Erd Tree. Once his god had fled, the Lord continued to await its return. Who is this felled god? There's many theories, almost so many that it could make up its own video, but what I think is important to understand is that in ancient times, Dragon Lord Placidus X was the original Elden Lord under a different outer god before the Greater Will. My theory is that this felled god that the Dragon Lord is waiting on is the Three Fingers. Evidence towards this theory is that the Three Fingers had been imprisoned below the capital city for what feels like a very long time, and that the Flame of Frenzy can only be subdued in the Dragon Lord's boss room using Mikola's Needle. But there's just not enough there to say concretely who this felled god is. If you guys have a theory of your own, please leave it down in the comments. But Placidus X was likely defeated by Godfrey, and at this point, the Greater Will took over the lands between under the rule of Queen Merica and Godfrey, the new first Elden Lord. The world of the lands between that we play the game in is not how it's always been. I'm sure that goes without saying. We are sent here initially 
for one purpose, to mend the Elden Ring back together and become the Elden Lord. And if you're like me during my first playthrough, that goal never wavered. I wanted to be the Elden Lord, but as I played the game more and more, and maybe more observant players noticed this during their first journey, but we can clearly see while we're playing the game that we have a major effect on the world that we play in. The world is in complete disarray, or it is exactly where it should be. Certain factions are thriving while others are struggling to stay alive. But what is and isn't is completely up to us. We are the tarnish that can alter the next coming era. We can keep it the same or we can change it drastically. The lands between is changing while Farah Missoula seems to sit in a purgatory state. Maybe it's to keep destined death away from those who would want to abuse it. Maybe it's to hold the original Elden Lord in hopes for a future with the ancient dragons and their felled god. Maybe everything has been carefully crafted by corrupt individuals in order to change the world or keep it exactly the same. But the more I play the game, the more my intentions of becoming Elden Lord changed. The guiding light that is meant to steer us towards our destiny, we come to realize is only what the greater will wants us to do. It's not our destiny, it's the greater will's destiny. When Melina sacrifices herself so that we may become Elden Lord, she wants us to finish what we've started, to fix the lands between and release Destined Death back into the world. When we kill Malaketh, he questions our decision to release the Rune of Death. <sighs> Witless tarnished, why cover Destined Death? To kill what? But what he doesn't know is that we aren't trying to kill anyone in particular. We are here to mend the Elden Ring and fix the lands between. In order to do this, death must be dispersed back into the world so that the lives of those wandering aimlessly can finally move on to whatever is next. Farah Missoula is a beautiful representation of what the Lands Between is currently experiencing. It's in a state of nothingness after everything it once knew was shattered. Instead of changing, it's held in this state, holding on to the past when we come into the world. When we release Destined Death, we allow the world to move on from the past and can start a new era in any way that we see fit or any way we've been manipulated into doing. Thank you for guiding me here. The one who walks alongside Flay shall one day meet the road of destined death. Goodbye. Thank you for watching and I really hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure to subscribe so that we can keep the channel growing every single day. The support you all have been showing has been a dream come true for me. So know from the bottom of my heart how much I appreciate you guys. Have a great rest of your day and I will see you all in the next video. Take care.